Jim. Welcome to this second class of our three week session. This is acrylic painting. And um, today I decided to show you a little bit of the work that I have done and how even for me, it's I get to a point where I'm struggling with my painting. So I'm gonna show you the point where I was struggling and then uh, where I get uh, where I get to later on. So I'm gonna mute all of you guys. And if at any time you need to ask a question, uh, just unmute yourself and you can ask it. So first I'm going to share my screen. And show you so when people submit their work, some of you have done it before. Um, I do a little, uh, I like to do a little critique. And this is an example, and it's also a good example to show you because um, it shows how beautiful this work is. And it's just, uh, it's just like it's almost there, but it's just missing one or two little things. So this is Jeanne Lucie, uh, Jean Lucie. She takes uh, the, the class in the afternoon, I think. Uh, so on the left here is the painting that she sent me. And what I did with my computer, so that's why it's not perfect, but what I did is I showed on this one here, see how the lip here, the rim is a little pointy on the, uh, on the back end. So I flattened it and immediately now this mug looks a, a regular size. Although doing it like this shows, it, it shows a little bit of an expressionist and it, it shows emotion. But if we wanted to have the drawing a little bit more correct, then we would need to flatten the back rim. So this is my first suggestion to Jean. And then also with my computer, I added a little bit of light here on the right hand side. So if I show the two, see how it's, it's dark the whole way and then here even darker. But I think there was probably a little bit of light here. So, oops. So that's why, I'm sorry, that's why I suggested to add a little bit of light here. And then the, the third change that I did is, see how the shadow goes from the object and it's the same um, sharpness of the shadow on this side and this side. Usually when a shadow goes away from the object, it goes very, it goes a lot softer. So I suggested softening the shadow here towards the, when it gets far away from the object. And then the shadow reads a little bit better this way. So, I mean, this painting I thought when I received it is excellent. It truly is. The only little things that I showed are very minute little things. And I like to see, uh, I like to see your work. So anyway, this is an example of a critique that I do. Now I'm going to show you my work. Oops. All right. All right. So this is the first painting I wanted to show you. When we look at this, this one on the left, uh, there's a lot of my eyes go to this handle here that is dark and it's against a medium tone background, the orangey brown background. And because my eye goes here, I totally miss that there is a pear here on the front or this beautiful little apple here. So what I did is I changed the background here to make it a, a darker brown. And when looking at this one on the right hand side, then my eye goes from the pear to the apple and then around here where the center of interest is. So um, you can appreciate, and I also, I, I decided to darken a little bit this area here so that it does not attract, 
the attention too much. So as you can see, when I was here, eh, I was not necessarily happy, but with this, I'm a lot more happy. Mind you, this painting is not one that I would enter in a show, but uh, it's, it's better this way than it was here. Any questions or comments? All right, so I'm gonna go to the next one. So this is a painting that I prepared for a class that I posted on my website. And um, when I was done with the painting, as it stands in, on the left here, I was not happy with the fact that the body of the seahorse here, it was kissing the blade of grass that's right here next to it. So the two were meeting right on the edge. This is usually a no-no. And also because the body of the seahorse was very long, it was almost, it almost appeared like it's another blade of grass. So it was, um, I wanted to give the body of the, the horse more roundness and I wanted to it not to kiss like this the blade, so I made it more round. See, see now it, on this one it overlaps the blade of grass, and by making it more round and simplifying the shape, now this whole seahorse on the right hand side is more of the center of attention. It comes forward more, and I also rounded up a little bit this area of the head and the neck and the back. So you see sometimes a simple change can make a big difference. The next one is this one. This one is a painting that I recently did about a month ago um, in a garden. And um, when I was at this point here, on the left. I was not finished with the painting and the photo is not very good, but it gives an idea of where I was. I was disgusted with the, the way that the fence was painted, this, this blue purple. I hated this color. I didn't like the crows because they had no shape. And this little grass here that I thought was very cool and very nice when I first started, felt very lonely and this was the only place where there was lime green in the painting. Um, but after having a nice sandwich, I started to paint again. This was painted in plein air and I decided to change the fence and make it more of a warm, it's almost like a dark ochre color, warm color. So I changed the color of the whole fence and I put, uh, I put the side where the sun was hitting then I added more lighter colors to have the crows be the center of attention I, and I gave them legs. And even though this green grass here or leaves was in the garden much lower, it was not in the frame if I looked at this area of the garden. It was much lower, but by bringing it up and having this leaf point this way, then it, 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 it invites the viewer towards uh, the center of attention, which is the grows, the crows. And it also uh, responds to this nice light lime green here, which is not by itself now. I also put a few very diffused leaves behind the fence. And it gave a sense that the garden may be continuing on the other side although it was a street, very boring. So I was going to trash this, but then I finished it and eh, I like it very much. All right, this is another one that I did in plein air. So on the left here, this is where, where it was at the end of my plein air day or plein air session. And everything was gray because Although there was sun when I started painting, the sun went away and then everything turned gray and that's what I, I ended up painting. But when I look back at, uh, you have a nice cat, Diane. 
when I looked back at my photo, I said, well, this was in the sun. So I added back all of this sun. This took five minutes. And look how it glows now. So sometimes a painting you want to trash, you might be able to revive it just by changing one thing. This is not completed yet, but now I know I will finish it and probably put it in my studio for sale. The next one is this one. Some of you have seen it. Um, so this was part of a plein air class that I did at Lucy, whoops, sorry, at Lucy Larkham Park in Lowell. And um, I had painted this painting as a demonstration and now Jim at the brush was asking for the paintings so that he can do a little show in the window at the brush. So I said, well, this little tree here, it looks like an Afro. I really don't like it. So, <laughs> so, so I decided to uh, paint it out or paint out most of it and just, just add more gray to it. There was too much yellow in the green. So I made it more gray and blue. Let me try to make it a little bit back, bigger, whoops. Just a little, whoops, doesn't work. I want to show both. Okay, yeah, so by adding a little bit more blue here in and reducing the size and just putting one tree trunk. Now this tree reads really well and I added a little car next to it and that gives a sense of scale. Now this other tree here on the left, way too big and it comes forward too much because it's a big dark mass. So I shortened the tree and I gave some tree holes, like sky holes in the tree. And I put it on the other side of the street. And now it, and I made it more gray, adding by adding blue in my green. So now it goes in the back. This whole tree here on the, on the right hand side was fine. Uh, this fence though here was lost in the grass somehow. So I repainted this, this whole uh, fence here. And I added this car, which also gives a sense of presence. And uh, this wobbly fence here is actually not wobbly at all. So I made it straight. And I, that's the main changes that I made. And if you look at the one on the left and the one on the right, oh, I added also the bottom of the windows here. That adds to be able to, uh, to understand where, where the windows end. So little changes, but big, big change in already for a show. So this one I painted very recently as well. It's called, um, it's called In Bloom. And it's the side door at the St. Anne's Church, also at the Lucy Larkin Park. So when I was done painting outside, this is how the painting was, this one on the left. Uh, but this little roof over the door didn't really have a whole lot of uh, shape. So when I was in my studio, I added a little bit of shade here, this, this darker line here, the shade under that uh, piece of wood here. I also uh, altered how I did the little bush and I added another one here instead of my name on the left. Uh, on the right hand side. And because there was green only at the bottom, I added some greens here that actually were there in, in, this, uh, in this tree. And the other thing that I did is I, uh, if I lower it a little bit, is I, I repainted the, the, the stairs and I added a path at the bottom of the stairs and now it read more like uh, the entrance we were allowed to come in because without the path and without knowing exactly where the steps were. So those are minute changes, but if you look at the left and then if you look at the right, you can see the one on the right is, is, uh, is, com is completed, whereas the one on the left, it, it's got some hits and misses. 
And I have one more, no, two more. So this one is a watercolor and watercolor is, I've always thought that it's impossible to erase or, or make any changes, but um, I hated this little square table that I had put the vase on. So I decided, well, I'm gonna put a round table instead. So I went a little darker with my lime green. I added the round table with the tablecloth that hangs down. And even though we can still see this line here that was here, it doesn't bother me because it could be like a little tablecloth that, that's in addition to the overall round tablecloth. And then I was able to put a nice shadow for the vase and I added some darks here in the water and in the vase for the grains that come down in the water, as well as up here, I added some greens, darker greens and some leaves and that made it come together. And when I showed it to my mom, she says, oh, can I have it? And I had to say, well, mom, remember, uh, you gave me back all my paintings because you have no more room on your walls. All right, and this is the same bouquet that I did in acrylics. And um, when I painted it, I wanted to do this nice uh, yellow ochre lime green background that responded to the purple flowers. It was almost like uh, the, uh, the complementary color. But when I got to this point, I just hated that background. I didn't like it. I said, well, what can I do? Well, I said, well, how about if I try to um, make a nice, a purpley, a very light purpley color. And then when I changed it from this to this, and I added this, then it, it just all came together. Although I still didn't like the, um, the bottom part. So then I continued painting on it and I'm gonna show you where it is now. I decided that I wanted the little round table for this one too, and that the table was not going to be a reddish brown, but more harmonious with everything else and give it a lime green table. And that's beautiful. Now this came together. Let's start my, my pear. It's a green pear. It's a nice green pear. Very nice. Michelle, is that you that we hear? I'm on mute. <laughs> okay, so you're not the loudest in class today. No.
<clears throat> I think that's me making a lot of noise. So when the brush reopens, the big question will be how much clientele will there be? There's very little clientele even before this whole situation. So All right, this is my first step and I hate the background right now. <laughs> so I got to think about what I'm going to do about this background. Uh, I kind of like the table though. So I think I'm going to paint the pair and then decide what I'm going to do about this background. Uh, paint the shadowy area of the pair. So since the pair is a nice green pair, the complementary of green is red. So I'm going to put some red in my green to paint the whole shadowy area of my pair. OK, 
gives me this. Immediately gives it shape. Down here. Still shadowy, but it's a lighter shadow because of the reflected light. All right. In my brush, I'll make more of the green and create a very smooth edge to this. the shadow. So I'm creating some more green and repainting this. Oops, not light enough. And in some areas, there's got to be some, some more of the red down here, which is in the shadow with some reflected light. This whole area as well, it's got some nice, interesting color. Now I'm going to make a lighter green. I need to change the background to nice light blue. What am I going to do? Oh, nice. Be <clears throat> a little bit of a purpley blue.
So now I add a little bit of yellow in my purple to create the shadow area here. On the wall. This is got to make sure that uh, keep the edge soft. A very interesting. And beyond that, it's a lighter color again. A very soft edge. It makes it a lot more interesting. <clears throat> And then on my table, I've got to create the shadow. So I have this beautiful yellow ochre that I created for the table. And in this, I'm going to put a bit of uh, indigo for shadow area. Yeah, like this. And it's not quite dark enough. It's a bit darker. <clears throat> And uh, what I need to do to make sure that my line is straight but not too hard and that my pair is nice and shadowy in the area over here. Already, it looks better. I have to go finish going around with my nice purple. And we're going around there. Nice. This color in the background here looks much better. Gotta make sure that I continue keeping an eye on my subject matter because it's got some darkness on this side, which I don't know where it comes from, but it's there. So 
I'm gonna make sure that we did go here for this one, keeping the edge soft. And because I put a shadow of that, I need to make sure that I create a shadow, uh, <clears throat> the little tail. Right here. Yeah. All right, it's 